Welcome to my session about uh, distributed transactions. So my name is uh, Martin Stefanko. I live in Czech Republic. I work as software engineer at Red Hat. I am a microprofile committer. So hopefully some of you already heard about microprofile. Uh, big microservices enthusiast. And if you want to catch me on internet, you have links there. So what we are going to talk about today is called Saga. Uh, how many of you know what Saga is? Wow, that's more people than I would expect, but not all. <laughs> so I, I still need to go at least through basic, so all, we are all on the same page. OK, so uh, for the demonstration purposes, I will just really quickly go through comparison between uh, normal asset transactions and what we are trying to achieve with the Saga. So uh, for my example, I will be using a traditional example. I am going on a conference, and I need to book uh, my flight, hotel, and rent a car. So. This will be my transaction that I will be used throughout, uh, using throughout this uh, session. So you probably all know what ACID stands for. So Atomicity, we either have all of these operations executed or none of them. Uh, consistency, we will never, never leave the system in inconsistent state. So again, all operations are executed, or it seems at least that uh, like we never executed any of these operation. Isolation, that means that if we have multiple of these uh, transactions executed in parallel, then they don't see each other uh, intermediate states. And uh, the last one, durability, if we finish transaction, either way, the result must be durable, uh, persisted in a durable way. So how do we achieve something like this is usually or always with the something which is called the consensus protocol. There are several of them. However, only real use is of two PC because not that the, we wouldn't have implementation of these more complicated ones, but uh, they are just not bringing that much benefits over uh, for people to actually do some implementations over of that. However, the issue with uh, consensus protocols are in all of these, and it's easiest to demonstrate on two PCs, so we will stick to it. So if I put this into a normal asset transaction, in a two PC, we need to have something which we call two PC coordinator, which is responsible for coordinating the transaction. So since we are talking about microservices, all of these uh, rectangles will be basically different microservices, and all calls will be throughout the network. So in two PC, phase one, Basically, what we need to do, somehow get the transaction, then we will ask for the individual resources inside the transaction. Uh, we will locate the resources in individual services. Then what we will do, we will lock them. So basically, we will basically say, this is now proposed for this particular transaction, and nobody else can touch this particular resource. So basically, reserve a uh, seed on a flight, for instance. Then we will send messages back from the uh, individual services to a coordinator saying that uh, the resources are prepared. So in the second phase, uh, if all individual participants respond that they were able to prepare and lock the resources, uh, coordinator ask them to commit the transaction. And basically, then we will remove the logs, actually perform that operation that was promised. So we will actually pay the money now for flight, for the hotel, and for the car. And then we can just confirm that everything was executed successfully and the transaction is successful. If some of these resources cannot be promised or cannot be fulfilled, so we are out of the cars, for instance, then the coordinator needs to abort the transaction. It will send the abort message to individual resources. We will, again, remove the logs, this delocate the resources that we allocated previously, and we will, uh, again, send the confirmation that everything was aborted successfully, send back the message to the client so the transaction can be restarted. What the problem with this is, and especially when you move into distributed environments, is that uh, network is failing all the time. So what happens if we take the logs on the resources, send the prepare messages to the coordinator, and coordinator is not there anymore? Then the only thing that we, need, uh, we can do is to retry these calls from the individual services to a coordinator until it is able to decide uh, the eventual outcome of the transaction. However, in the meantime, all of these resources in individual services are having these logs. So nobody else, if there are multiple different 
clients that would be able to pay for these resources is unable to access this. And until the coordinator will be restarted again, you might have uh, several people or several clients which would be willing to pay for that last seat on the flight, but you are just not able to, put, uh, to accept the transaction because you promised it to somebody else. So, and here, the, here comes the Saga to solve these kind of issues. So Saga pattern is actually the new very old concept because the original paper that introduced Sagas is from 1987, where they uh, basically, these two gentlemen, uh, described uh, long running transactions in the databases. And by long running, I mean days. So like taking these logs even in traditional databases for days is crazy. So uh, what Saga is based on is basically a compensating action. That means that you as a developer, you define both your original transaction action that needs to be defined, and you also define something which we call semantical compensation. What this semantical compensation is, is totally up to you. Uh, we even cannot know what it needs to be. So if your original action is to put the table into a database, surely you can do compensation as a reverse action just to delete that same line. However, if your original operation doesn't need to always have opposite action that can undo the original operation, if you, for instance, uh, send an email, you cannot unsend an email. However, usually you can do some semantical compensation in a way that you will send a follow-up email that says that previous action is canceled. So, and in this way, uh, basically, here is also a link to applying of the Saga pattern, rather old uh, talk right, uh, right now. Uh, but uh, here, Katie defined how, to, how they applied Saga pattern, I think, in a Hello game. So it's actually something that is really usable, but of course it has its some drawbacks uh, against the asset, but we will get to that. So doing the same example in a Sangha this time. So now I have a Saga. I will not have a coordinator for now. So I have only these three services that we had previously. And I will send this Saga to the first service. Uh, you can imagine that this can be like only a definition, some message which contains uh, requirements for that particular Saga to execute. If the Ireland service receive uh, this definition, it will locate its resources. And here is the difference. We directly go ahead and pay for that resource. So we actually perform that second phase of the to PC protocol, we actually pay the money, and now we have a, a reservation of flight, but we still don't have hotel or car rental. So we are already in uh, inconsistent state. And basically, with this, uh, you will do the same for the both hotel and for the car. And if all of them are successful, you will just say, yes, we were able to pay for everything, so the saga executed or transaction executed uh, successfully. Of course, what will happen if this is not the case? So again, I will pay for hotel and for uh, the flight. However, again, I cannot find any free cars. So now I am in a bad situation because I already paid money for flight and for the hotel, but I cannot finish the transaction altogether. So here, what we do is basically we will go in a reverse order of the operations and reply that uh, or ask you to apply that compensating actions. Why in reverse order? Because uh, individual parts of the saga can depend on each other. So we will send cancel saga message back to the hotel service. Basically here we will directly just cancel the reservation. So your card will be refunded or something like this. And again, the same thing with the flight. Here, the compensation actions are pretty straightforward. And we will send back the message that Saga needs to be restarted later. So just doing this as a sequence diagram too. So in a first uh, original uh, like order of operations, we will first ask airline service to book the flight. Then we ask the hotel service to book the hotel. Now we already have these two resources present. We ask car rental to book the car, but this is not possible. So we will uh, send another Saga canceled message back in a reverse order called cancel hotel operation and then cancel flight operation. Okay, so we already have 
atomicity and probably already can see that we are losing especially isolation because having two sagas in parallel uh one saga can see that uh second saga already paid for the flight but it didn't pay for the hotel and for the car and we also lose consistency because we are in any intermediate state of the saga we are in inconsistent state so what uh another chemistry shortcut came up with <laughs> uh is base uh basically uh stands for basically available this means that we prefer availability instead of consistency that means that your resources are available either either way you have more chance to actually perform the operations of course more cancellations you might end up with some edge case scenarios in wrong uh worse state than with acid but usually it's not the case then you have soft state soft state that just means that if you make a snapshot at any point of time a uh, point of time if there is some saga in flight you cannot say that the state is final however what saga guarantees you is called eventual consistency that means that if you stopped executing any new sagas then in some point in the future your state of your system will become consistent so this is guaranteed however this uh doesn't specify when so it might be days <laughs> or, or similar hopefully not but yeah we, we will get to possible issues so there are two ways how you can implement this the first one is uh decentralization which is what i was showing you till now so the saga is self-contained and is traveling between individual microservices and the second one is with orchestration where we have again something which is called saga orchestrator or, or coordinator which uh, basically acts uh, as a registration service for individual participants so each participant when it knows that it needs to participate in a saga it enlists itself with a coordinator so in this way uh you get something like this uh i read some paper where they were actually trying to put orchestration uh into the some bigger microservices deployment and basically they try to like uh tell people that if you have more than five services it might be hard to maintain because you are sending a lot of messages between the uh, individual services you need to cut uh, keep the track which particular operation is in which message so uh in our implementation which i am going to be showing we decided to use that orchestration and i will be starting a coordinator so what i am going to show you today is called microprofile lra this is uh well not so new uh, uh specification which is outside of the microprofile umbrella but you can take it from microprofile this stands for long running actions because this is what saga is <laughs> and i will be showing you our implementation from red hat which is hosted in uh, nariana transaction manager project okay with that if you have any questions please just ask when i'm going because i will then forget what i was talking about okay so with that i will make this bigger and hopefully you can see this big enough okay so i will create a new directory so we start clear and for my demonstrations i will be using parkus today not because I like Quarkus. <laughs> uh, with Quarkus, you have this uh, Quarkus CLI application that you can download, which is basically a wrapper around Maven plugin or Gradle invocations. Uh, so basically, if I type this Quarkus create app only in the beginning, it will pull with Maven archetype uh, Quarkus application and it will generate a new Quarkus application. So I am generating uh iox stefunk airline service so that one of the services that we are uh, we saw in the uh, slides and i am specifying manually a bunch of extensions and this is only required because you see here narayana lra this is the only extension that is actually providing that lra functionality however quarkus switched uh like two weeks ago into default mode for uh, rest it to be rest easy reactive if you saw session this morning uh, basically you saw that it's not so usual rest way and uh, because of the uh, reactive nature of rest easy reactive so asynchronous ways of doing things uh, lra has a one slight issue which i am going to fix hopefully when i finally have some time to sit on my computer so i need to switch back to that original one so this is why there are four extensions but 
usually Narayana LRA would be enough in the future. So I will open this in the IDE, move this something somewhere else. How do I turn presentation on? Nice. I remember. It is a long time that I needed to like do a live demo, sorry. Uh, so uh, first thing that I'm going to do before I will start my demo mode is to actually start with the configuration because uh, Quarkus LRA coordinator, which I'm going to use, or Narayana LRA coordinator runs on port 8080. So I need to switch to a, oops, 8081 in my services so they don't collide later. And I also need to set one required property, which is basically pointing where that coordinator is going to be running because of course we are in distributed environments. So saving this, I can go into my terminal and type Quarkus dev. And in a while I will get Quarkus dev mode running. So hopefully by now you already heard about Quarkus and you know what development mode is basically what I will get is hot reload now in the in the background, and in the next terminal I can just verify that my application is running, and that should be oops, eighty eighty one, exposing hello rest easy. So with this uh, dev mode, what I will get if you haven't seen it so far, I can just change my code, save the file, repeat the HTTP call, and it's dynamically reloaded, recompiled in the background. Okay, so with that, I can delete everything that was generated for me because I want to start from scratch. And I will generate a new airline resource. Uh, MicroProfile LRA, because it's part of the MicroProfile, is currently tied to Jaxare specification. Uh, are you all familiar with Java E? Hopefully, basically, uh, because MicroProfile is basically based on four uh, default uh, Java E back then, because it was created in 2006, I think, a specification that was JAXRS, CDI, and JSON PB. We need to stick to this. However, in our implementation, we plan to expand this to more protocols as we are going to be moving the implementation forward. So then you will be able to choose basically a connector on how to connect to the coordinator, either through Kafka, MQP, or something something else, depending on your use cases. So uh, to define now a JAXRS uh, endpoint, I need to put a path annotation on it. And I will expose just a single method for now, which will be book. And I, oh, what is this? I will book. Uh, new flight so basically here i will just i i have a really nice shortcut to log nicely for demos so i will just log that i am booking a flight if i can type then i will actually perform that booking so we can see it somewhere and then i will just return that everything is correctly Processed. So in this perform operation, just for now, I will just sleep for two seconds. So we can actually see in the coordinator that the saga is being executed. So, uh, okay. So with this, uh, basically now I should be already able on port 8081 airline book because I have that uh, live reload or already be able to call this operation, but I'm still not doing anything in a saga. So to do actually the saga, as I said, the first thing that I need is that uh, LRA coordinator. So LRA coordinator is coming from the Narayana. It is something which you can uh, uh, run as a container from Docker Hub. So basically similar use cases as you have with, I don't know, uh, Prometheus or Kafka or something similar. It's just part of your infrastructure, basically, but it's also Quarkus application because we, we are in, uh, in Reddit. And also because we use JAXRS protocol in the background, basically all that uh, Quarkus coordinator is, is exposing REST API. And I actually have now one community member which is going to implement client in uh, Node.js. Okay, so uh, as I said, this is a normal 
Jack, uh, REST application, so I can call it on port 8081 slash LRA coordinator. Now I am calling inside to that uh, Podman container or uh, which I am running, basically getting back a list of the LRAs that the coordinator currently knows of. Of course, we, since we don't have any LRAs running, this is an empty JSON. But for the demonstration, I will put the watch uh, on this endpoint. So we got it every one tenth of the se second. So we can see that if basically, oops, sorry, if I uh, want to put this invocation of the book method into the LRA, uh, I need to do a few things. The first one is to say that I want to start a new LRA when I'm entering this method. This is similar annotation as if you are familiar with the JTA or with Spring also transactional transactional annotation. So here you can say uh, LRA type mandatory required, etc. The default is similarly required. So that means that if I'm going to invoke this method, if uh, there is no incoming transaction in the call, I will start a new transaction and I will end the LRA or the transaction when the method finishes. Uh, because of the reasons of, of the specification, uh, we need to also define at least one additional method in uh, each LRA participating class, because uh, basically this is defined as a distributed service. So uh, you probably know that when you are writing a standard, you need to have uh, some TCK technology compatibility kit, basically a test suite that is verifying that something happens. And because we have no way how to force the actual implementation to actually start the LRA when this method is entered, uh, if there is no some additional requirement, we needed to put this into the specification. So either each LRA resource needs to be either a participant, that means that it needs to define that compensating action, which I'm going to do now, or it needs to be LRA listener. LRA listener is just a service which is uh, like observer for the finishing of the LRA invocation. So you will get the notification when all of the compensation or all of the competitions have been processed correctly. So, but I want to define a compensation handler now. So again, my coprofile LRA comes with this at compensate annotation, which is used to define the compensation. When you are using compensation, it needs to be a put method. This is specified in a specification. What is the path on which you are exposing on name of the method doesn't matter at all because we are going to parse this uh, dynamically. So I will just uh, really quickly cancel, look nicely, link flight, and I will return again response, okay, built. So now, because I am defining this compensate annotation, when this LRA is invoked, new LRA will be started. It will see that this particular airline resource needs to be a participant in that uh, new saga that was started. It will enlist itself with a coordinator. And when the LRA would fail, this compensation handler would be called. So hopefully if I typed everything correctly, if I just repeat this call again, you will see for two seconds in this watch that a new LRA is started for that two seconds. And when that original at LRA uh, method finishes, it is uh, finished successfully. Of course, if it's finished successfully, my compensate handler won't be called. However, to tell LRA to not finish successfully, uh, we default it to the REST protocol. So in Java, generally, if uh, you are returning some different status code from a JAXRS method, you throw some exceptions, which are usually processed as uh, 400 status codes or 500 status code. So in this at LRA annotation, you have two parameters. Oh, hopefully you can read this cancel on which uh, in which you can list individual HTTP status codes on which to cancel or cancel on family, which defaults exactly to 400s and 500s. So I don't need to specify this manually. If I just change this to status 500, I am now telling the LRA runtime to cancel the saga. So if I repeat this call after the two seconds, my 
compensation handler has been called. There is also just, I have this completely another handler, which is exactly the same as the compensation handler. Instead, just instead of compensate, you can say complete, which is basically the same operation just being called when the saga finishes successfully. And why this could be useful is usually in your service, you need to keep some information that is required for that compensation to be matched to that original saga. So this com uh, complete handler can help you to clean up that uh, information that you are keeping. So I don't know how to call this complete. If I just say here complete and here, oops, complete, then going back because I am still returning status 500. So I will just return now again uh, 200. So we are finishing successfully. If I will restart it again in two seconds, I will get that complete handler called. Go ahead. For now, yes. Yes, in a minute. <laughs> it, it's better to start f simpler. <laughs> okay, so, uh, okay, I, I can show first uh, the new operation and then we will get back to different things. So, okay, uh, for now we have only single service. So what I am going to do is copy airline service into the hotel service because we don't have that much time. In hotel service, I have like prepared only, oh uh, yeah, I need to subset flight and airline and flight. Hopefully this renamed most of the stuff that I am using. So my hotel service is now open here and I need to rename this to hotel. And yes, hopefully if I just really quickly go through it, canceling hotel. Okay. Just for the demonstration purposes, this is more than enough. So because this is tight and yeah, one more thing that I need to do is to change the port because now hotel service is running on port 8082, so they don't collide. Okay. Now I hopefully can just start Quarkus Dev 2 and hopefully if I typed everything correctly. No, I need to recompile because I didn't. Can I yeah, go ahead. You uh, need to figure it in your memory, or you just up and running and you set up your services? Yeah, so the question is if I need to configure anything for the LRA to be running. And yes, there is one required property, and this is this one Quarkus LRA coordinator URL, because you, you need to point individual participants to the location of the coordinator. For now, yes. Uh, for now, no. Uh, this is only defaults that I'm showing so far, but I will show you some configuration later. Okay, so, uh, okay. Now, hopefully I am running in Quarkus Dev. I need to recompile because I renamed the class. Yeah, I, skipping time sometimes needs to recompilation, but now I'm running both services in dev mode. And uh, basically what I need to do is now from my airline service, create a client class. So for that, I will be using another microprofile specification called the REST client. So I will create the REST uh, interface called hotel client. Oh my God, typing on a demo client. So uh, if you want to define a REST client in a micro profile all you need to do is put register rest client annotation on it for you can also specify if you know that the url of your targeting service is not changing which i know that for my demo is not specified directly in the annotation so that will be localhost 8082 uh, where my hotel service is running and then you use normal juxtas annotations as you would be defining your server site just for the client and the stuff will be generated for you. So here I know that I have it exposed at path hotel, hopefully. Let me just check. Yes, hotel and I need a single method. This can be even void because we don't care. Call it book hotel and this will be get at path 
book. So this is all I need to do to define that I want to make, uh, make HTTP call on this base URI localhost 8082 and at path slash hotel slash book. So in my service, all I need to do is just to inject this into my configuration with a special qualifier, CDI qualifier called REST client and just inject hotel client, hotel client. And instead of my booking, I can now just call hotel client book hotel. And hopefully if I typed everything correctly, now when I will repeat the call to the airline service, it should be propagated to the hotel service. And hopefully if everything works, it is, we have competitions called in both services. Yeah, that's too big. You see here and here. So I don't need to do anything else. If you stick to JaxRS and normal way of propagating things, we will intercept all the calls, even outgoing calls. We will put our context into that. And uh, in the hotel service, we will again intercept the incoming call, parse that, and list into the same uh, LRA and you are enlisted in that. So if now in my hotel service, I will, so now I'm in hotel. If I, again, in the hotel, and maybe I can comment out also perform booking. So we save some time now fail. So I cannot book the hotel. So I already book the airline and I cannot book the hotel. So if I will rerun this, Yes, uh, we will get cancellation. So compensation call in one service and we will get also co cancellation call in the other service. However, because I am now returning 500 from that original call, we get uh, also exception locked. So let me fix that. Uh, can I just do, yeah, go ahead. Mm, this is nothing, uh, that client is not something which is uh, specific to LRA. That client is a normal microservice call between A and B. It, no, 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 you don't need, it. Uh, you mean this interface, hotel client? Oh, come on. This one? No, this is just one way how to define. This is another microprofile specification called microprofile REST client. So this is my preferred way how to define out outgoing JaxRS requests. But normal JaxRS client, like really client builder, new client, target, request get, still would work because it's still, this will still generate a normal JaxRS client in the background. It's just a more declarative way how to define these uh, outgoing REST, REST calls, which I personally prefer. Yes, you can. However, if, uh, if you, well, okay. So basically the idea is that in that hotel, we will intercept the call to that at LRA annotated method. We will check if there is an LRA context, which I will show you in a minute. And if there is, we will enlist with the configured coordinator also in the same LRA. So what you can do, you can get this context. I will show you in a while how, and you can manually make that call yourself, but you, with uh, this that I am showing you, you see that I don't need to specify any manual propagation of the context because it's everything working out of the box. Okay, like this. Okay, so what I was doing, I hope that I can do it like this. I will just uh, catch the exception so we don't see it in the, in the lock. And yes, so you can see that now when the hotel canceled the origi original saga, we called the compensation also inside the airline. However, I have still this nice uh, log message, which is saying that I could not close the LRA. I will switch back in uh, the hotel back to the original response. So I will show you that this will jump there also when we have a successful saga. So what is basically this saying is that we made the call going through airline where we started the saga, propagated it into the hotel. hotel is uh, now because we didn't specify anything ending the transaction because by default it will end but when the hotel book method is invoked and we now return back to the original airline service and when that airline book method ends we will try to cancel the same LRA again 
but the LRA is already finished because it was called from uh, the hotel. This is that nature of eventual consistency. So you can have this really nice <laughs> cases when, when you need to know where is what finished and uh, basically have the idea of what is happening. So in this at LRA annotation, we have a parameter called end, which defaults to true, basically saying when this method finishes, we will commit the transaction. However, I can specify in my hotel that I don't want to finish that saga that I'm going to receive uh, in this method. And then when I restart it now, it is currently correctly finished in the original starting service because it wasn't finished here in hotel. Okay. So since we have quite some time, but I can like leave you more time for the launch if I finish sooner. I want to show you also how to get to that uh, LRA context. So LRA annotation, again, because it is uh, tied to JAXRS, to get to that context, you can use directly headers, JAXRS, uh, well, HTTP headers that you are injecting into your application. So with add header param uh, uh, annotation, I will get access to HTTP headers. LRA annotation directly contains all specification defined headers. So LRA HTTP context header is the one that is propagating the currently active LRA context. And this is a new URI by the specification, but just so I don't need to always call to string on it, I will put it into the string and I will just print it here. And uh, just to show you that I am not lying to you, I will copy paste this also into the hotel. <laughs> So LRA ID, if I now restart the saga again, you will see that we got the same LRA context in both services. So this is all that magic in the background. This is that context that is being like injected to the Arduin call automatically. Uh, uh, you can also override this manually. So if you have multiple sagas or multiple uh, ways how to execute your code, you can manually specify this header on the outgoing JAXRS invocation, and of course this will be used, so we will not override it. So if you don't specify anything, and we know that you have currently active LRA, we will inject it into the outgoing call, but if you specify something, we will use that. And you can also get this uh, LRA HTTP header in the, well, I don't need it in cancel, I can put it into complete, in the complete and compensate uh, headers, so you can associate the individual uh, calls of the callbacks that are coming from the coordinator also with the particular saga. So if I can type, I can put it also to the competitions header because we don't have that much time. And you will see that complete will get called with the same uh, URI. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Okay. <laughs> yep, hey, no worries. Like really, this is intended for the really long running transaction. So like how long it will be taking, it doesn't matter. Go ahead. Yeah. Great question. So the question is about what happens if something fails and we need to retry. So basically in all of that individual parts which are intercepted, this is in the background still JAXRS calls to the coordinator. Either way, if the coordinator fails or if the participant fails, when it starts back up, we will try to again enlist with the repeat the operation until it succeeds. So uh, basically coordinator has transaction log. This still builds on the original Arjuna Narayana Transaction Manager. So if you are familiar with uh, JBoss products, you know what the object store is. This is still in the background of that coordinator. So uh, if the coordinator fails and comes back up, it knows which LRAs has been started and which were in which state. And if the participant fails, we have a timeout uh, in the coordinator, which will try to replay the operation and will try to get hit back to the original state. This is uh, basically done still with the original uh, JBoss properties inside the coordinator. Uh, 
Well, you can then, s if you have a different policies for different sagas, you can start as many of these coordinators as you want with different conv uh, sorry, configurations. <laughs> Go ahead. My personal opinion, because really uh, REST was chosen just purely because this was proposed in MicroProfile, so we had to use it. Uh, personally, I think that using something like Kafka, which has more reliable messaging, would be better. And I would still like to include it inside uh, our implementations, because this is what we currently are doing in Red Hat. We are trying to add more functionality in the implementation, of course, exposing in Quarkus. However, if you want to stick to standard, you will need to stick to JaxRS. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, can you go? Well, if coordinator is down and uh, participant try to enlist, it will remember this uh, uh, information and it will be retrying it again, again, and again until it succeeds. Of course, for that period of time, we will not enter your business method because we cannot enter the business method before we, been, we know that the service is already enlisted in that particular LRA. Yeah. What if both when it's retrying, coordinator didn't start yet while it fails? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, if there is an asteroid, then you are screwed, nevertheless. <laughs> but uh, basically, if the LRA is never started, so we don't have a transaction lock inside the coordinator, then we, there is nothing we can do. So it would be like the call never happened actually to that original service. But if we have that information that it was processed, we will be retrying and eventually, hopefully we will finish it. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a question. So let's assume the action was completed, but there was a connection timeout before the, let's say the LRA coordinator was able to like get the information. So there was a timeout, what happens then? Well, connections uh, failures will be handled will be handling, uh, handled in the same way as a failure returned from the participant. So either we get a successful response, which we know that we finished successfully, everything else will be then retried or processed as a failure. Well, basically, no. Connection failure will be retried, but if you return some uh, status code, which is defined in that cancel on, uh, cancel on family or cancel on status codes, then we will fail the LRA. So this is something that you need to take care on take care of, uh, you need to make sure that if your service fails, you will not return status codes, which will cancel the LRA inside the coordinator. But connection refuse will be retried because this is like a uh, network failure. Sorry, sorry, I, you need a microphone because I really I cannot hear that far. You know, the action has already completed, you know, but somehow the connection timeout, why getting the response back to the coordinator? So the action on the on the client, let's say the booking, has already completed, but somehow when the response was going back to the coordinator, there was a connection timeout. After all, this is natural. So are you going to try to compensate? Because if you try to compensate the action, that means that you have to, have to re uh, revert an already completed action. So you are asking if there is a way how to define some timeout for the general LRA. Yeah. Yes, actually there is. You can also cite timeout inside that annotation, I think, I believe. Yeah, time limit. So you can like put this uh, if you want, and after this time limit, coordinator will automatically call compensations on all the services if it's not finished. Let's assume we have uh, like lots of uh, services which are working together and we need to have like inquisition transaction to retrieve. Whenever each one of the services is failed, is it possible to like move on to the next service or we need to retry whenever this will be succeed? Uh, so basically your uh, calls between your services are always your thing. So uh, if airline calling hotel would fail, then it's the responsibility of the airline to retry that uh, call. And we have different microprofile specifications for this. Uh, I can tell you after the uh, session, if you would like. Uh, however, we will only retry the stuff that is communication between coordinator and the services. If like your inter-service communication, we cannot do anything. Uh, about yeah, that. but whenever like your coordinator is telling other services to retrieve, uh, to cancel like uh, the bookings that they have, for example, 
uh, it failed for the car booking and uh, we still need to uh, cancel the hotel and airline. Uh, is it possible to configure in that way or uh, whenever it's failed? The, so the chain is failed? No, 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 no. Uh, well, because we use that orchestration, basically each participant has its own channel through which we communicate with it. So if uh, airline is failing and other ones can be called, we will call them. And eventually we'll be retrying only airline until we'll, it will successfully uh, respond. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Do we ever get to the eventually consistent state? And do we know when we get to that? Point? Well, uh, that's a good question. Basically, yes, you can. If you stop executing new LRAs and you can check always, where is it, that LRA coordinator to check the actual state of the currently executed LRAs. So if it returns you this empty JSON, you know that there is no more LRAs in flight. So you know that you are finished. And this should be consistent state. Good. So th thanks for the for the presentation, amazing. So just I want to ask is like, you, it seems to have a, a pretty fine static scenario. What if we want to change the scenario, for example, to book only uh, an airline a hotel and not, not a car or to book like a, a flight and not a hotel, just a car. So how so it, it doesn't seem to be very flexible well, uh, and seems that the hotel this is, is really, uh, really easy to implement because what I can do in my airline service is just do if something call airline, if something else call car and you are in charge of when the calls are actually propagated. This is your services, like both airline and hotel service is something that you type. This is your business logic. So, so it seems like the first service in the, in the row, it will define the whole saga, right? Not necessarily, even I think, well, if, if I would do like some uh, trip booking service, yeah. which would do like free calls, just starting the saga and making free calls to airline, uh, car and hotel, then it, then it would still work. It's up to you how you will define. It just needs to be a JAXA RISCO, which is yep, makes by sense. requirement yeah, of the yeah, yeah. specification. Make, makes sense. Thanks, thanks a lot. No worries. Okay, I think that I won't start with any more stuff. So any more questions? <laughs> there is uh, a few more things that you can do in that, but uh, the specification is available on GitHub as all microprofile stuff, so you can read through it if you would like. So please go ahead. Maybe you know if Spring also supports uh, somehow LRA? So if Spring will use JaxRS, which I believe it can, uh, because really how we implemented this is with the JaxRS filters. So that means uh, if, you are, if, if you don't know what JaxRS filter is, is basically you can fil uh, make your method invoked for every incoming and outgoing uh, call from your service. So that means that we can then like intercept each call and make our logic in that. And personally, I don't think that this would work with uh, Spring Web, but if you use JaxRS, it would. However, implementing this and maybe it's something that we would consider doing if there would be requests coming from customers. Uh, we just need some f form of interception of the incoming calls. So definitely there is a way how to do this in Spring, but I don't know personally what it is. Um, if you had a more, well, the question is, how do you match the book with the cancel if you have more than well, more than one endpoint and make different compensation methods because you know they perform different actions. But well, from you the same service, can you have that in the same file, or you have to later create a new resource for every? So that is a good question. Well, if that LRA itself it's not enough for you, and you would like you cannot have multiple compensations because if you define multiple compensate methods, we will just randomly pick one because it doesn't make sense. But uh, each of these uh, add complete and compensate uh, methods can also pick this LRA HTTP recovery header, which is basically lower level of that subscription. This represents really one uh, relationship of one participant with one LRA. So you can at least one, theoretically at least one uh, participant multiple times with same LRA and distinguish them on this LRA recovery header. It's called recovery because uh, you can also use it later to recover in some scenarios the participant. 
Okay, so if there are no more questions, I have one minute left. So thank you very much for your attention.